Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? Yo. What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. Today, today I got a, a special guest in the building. You know, we are your host, Architect Beats. My uh, shout out to my partner, Mike Trauma D. He is under the weather, so I had I have my I have my other brother filling in, co-hosting today with the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast is actor extraordinaire. Sean Anthony Baker. Hold on, let me get the let me get the claps in there. Hold on, let me get the claps. Yeah, let me get my get my, get my clap. Let me get my clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Just keep crying, just keep crying. There it is. There it is. <laughs> hey, if it's your first time here, uh, welcome to the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. Uh, we're platinum producers, Architect Beats. Every week we get together and we have a uh, just a discussion about the music industry, the music business. And we basically share resources and tips and things of that nature to help uh, upcoming artists and producers and musicians and songwriters how to make it into the music business. But today, because I got my brother on, who is a, the actor extraordinaire, if you haven't seen him, he plays Coach Naheem Raheem from the uh, Apple Plus, TV Plus uh Show Swagger, it's mm -hmm. on right now. They just wrapped season two. Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa! Big things are going. You know Big things saying? are going. You see? <laughs> yeah. so if you haven't, if you haven't seen Swagger, go check that out. I'm gonna drop a link in the description so you can see that. Yes, please. Um, but you know, that's that's the latest thing. But if you haven't seen him on, oof, well, wait, it's a BT tell. He's been on the. He's been in All Eyes on Me. Uh, FBI, uh, Queen of the South, uh, you name it, he's been in it. So, <laughs> so the, yeah, you know, yeah. just, just got to let people understand, you know, the caliber of person we're talking about. But today we want to get into, um, I have a, a question that a lot of people ask me as far as uh, different artists that we work with. All the artists that I always work with, they always say they want to transition from mm. a music career to an acting career. So I said, you know what? I want to have an episode. And I want to basically talk to the actor, the professional, <laughs> right. who who had a record deal, who had a publishing deal, who who was a songwriter and producer for platinum artists. I want him now to say, "Hey, how did he transition from your music career, right, into an acting career? Because it's kind of like lightning striking twice." So, Ooh. so we want to kind of, you know, give people some tips and like, hey, if you want to pivot. Or if you want to do them at the same time, what does that take? But I'll leave it to you. For the new folks that's getting on, um, how do people, if they want to transition, how do they start? Mm. Um, great, great intro, brother. <laughs> Thank hey, you so much. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to get. I'm trying. I'm trying to get good at this. No, you listen. You ain't trying. You're doing because ain't no trying at this point. You're doing it, brother. All right, appreciate, you're appreciate. doing it so so. Hats off to you and brother Mike D. Like y'all are absolutely doing it so so. Proud of you, man. And um, how do you, you know? First, let me say this about uh, the I, I I'm gonna say the craft of being an artist. Period, or being a creative. Um, the first thing is that you know we're, we're already in the we're already in that lane. You know, we're already kind of in that world, if you will, of of being an artist and being a creative. So part of the artistry. Um, in being a creative um, and being a storyteller is already there, right? Because actors are essentially storytellers, right? We're telling stories, whether it be from a TV, film, stage, theater. Um, same thing, uh, a recording artist <clears throat> is a storyteller, right? Whether, you're, whether it's spoken word, whether it's R&B, rapper, you know, you are uh, telling stories, you know, and some of the greatest, um, Rappers, singers are telling stories of of plight, of love, of of you know trials and tribulation, of relationships, of you know hardships in life, and you know, what what they had to go through. So, be already being a story a storyteller, you already have one leg up creatively. The other part to that though is number one, it although it's in the same realm, but it, it, it's it's completely two different levels of artistry. Um, it's different than going into a studio and sitting down and writing, right? Or, or going into a studio and dropping bars or having a having like a, a wonderful 
you know, voice that carries, you know, um, or, or that or that soothes or that or that inspires. We're talking about a level of artistry where you have to decide that you want to creatively either become tell the story of somebody that might be close to what you to what you know, what you're comfortable with, or that you have to go completely outside of yourself to want to create a world. Uh, I'm sorry, create a per create this person or a persona of a character that you're having to tell the story about or of. And so it's just very, it, it's a, the first thing is a decision. You know, you have to decide that this is what I want to do as a, uh, um, in the next part of my artistry, or the next part of my craft. I would love to, meaning the, whoever the creative artist is, whoever the recording artist is, I want to get into it because I want to be able to tell stories in a different way. I want to get into being an artist on a different level. Um, it's it's a privilege, right? I, I think that as a recording artist, as an artist, period, it's a privilege to be able to have the talent and do what we do. Uh, but when we decide to go out the realm of what we've already known, it's like, okay, so this is different. It's alluring. You know what I'm saying, Doug? It's alluring. You you If we've watched any recording artist, you know, any rapper, any singer on stage, you're like, man, she's killing it. He's killing it. They love the energy that they're bringing. They're on stage. They got the whole crowd in the, in the palm of their hands. <laughs> you know, you've got what, 15,000 people, 20,000 people in the palm of your hands, you know, singing or rapping your lyrics. It's, it's, it's a feeling like none other because you know you created this, right? Whether you wrote the lyrics, whether you are performing it, right? Your greatest performance. Um, they know there's a power in, in that and you're telling a story. It's like that for an actor as well because an actor at that point in time, whether you're on stage in front of a thousand people or a hundred people, or whether you're in that or on, on, on set and that camera's capturing you, right? The camera, boom, it's capturing you for that moment. And in that moment, you have the audience, you have the audience's attention. You have them also right there in the palm of your hands. And, you're, and, and, the, and the, the truth of that is, can I be believable? Can I give my authentic self now in this realm, it's not a recording artist because I'm, I'm, you believe the recording artist because, you know, if we're singing or we rapping or whatever, we're on stage and we perform and dance and everything like you, we got it because we know that that's our bag. But now, but as an actor, for me to tell you the story, right, of, for instance, in, in Swagger, of a Naeem Rahim, do I, are you believing this person or believing me as a husband, as a father, as a, as a community person, as an activist, even though I might have some ties to him and feel closely to it, but if you're not a father, what is that? How, what do you what, where do you have to go? If you're not a, if you know, if you're not a husband, where do you have to go? Same thing. If you're not a wife, if you're not, you know, certain things you have to be able to delve into and make sure that you're telling it authentically. So I guess the first thing is decide that you want to take this journey, and then when you go after it, now you've got to take the next step. The next step is to study the craft. Study the craft, because it is a craft. If as a singer, as a writer, you know, as a rapper, as a spoken, we all had to, at some point, pay attention to or follow, you know, in, in uh, uh, the footsteps of someone that we admired, you know, that, that we have as an idol. And we're like, well, how did she do that? How did he do that? Listen to the, listen to the bars, you know? When you think of when you think of like Nas and them talking about how they listen to rock him, right? It's like, did you see the way that the way the way that he chopped up those bars, the way that like he's rhyming on every other like it's it's a it's a skill, right? It's a craft, and sometimes we have it innately, but but it's still a craft that you have to study. So, so, so what, what, are, what are some of the ways that folks can can like you know besides you know uh, watching your favorite actors? And you know, doing that. What are some of the ways that they can actually go study? The practical ways that they can go study. The practical way to study is to take classes or to get an acting coach. You know, for those that are, um, let's depending on where you are in your um, as a recording artist in your career. You know, you might be, you know, you're up there, right? As an A lister in the in the recording artist community, um, you may not necessarily go into a class, but you can get an acting coach, and the acting coach will help you develop. Um, We'll just kind of see where you're at, you know, in terms of the level of, of, of performing, acting, believability, authenticity, 
um, in, in, in delivering a scene. And then they'll, you know, dealing with the right coach, they'll be able to guide you from there in terms of going over techniques, um, you know, uh, memorization. I mean, and it's, it's interesting because as recording artists, right, like memorization should already be there, right? Because like, you know, right. lyrics and, but it's different. It's different when you have to, you know, open up a script and go through pages, you know, <laughs> almost like a novel. And you're like, and you end it, you know, of course, we break it down over over a period of time, but it's understanding that now you're you're trying to retain words, but it's not just retaining the words, but it's also understanding the moments and the beats and what this character is about. Because again, that's what makes it authentic and believable. Um, understanding, doing scene, a script analysis and scene analysis and scene breakdowns, character breakdowns. So coaching um, and, and getting, getting coaching and taking acting lessons is like, that's, that's actually, I would say that's one of the, if not, well, once you decide the first step in deciding the second step is okay. Now let me go get, let me go get, you know, uh, lessons. Let me go get coached. Let me do this a professional way because again, we get inspired, right? And we're like, I could do that. Right. I could get on stage. Or I could I me mean, for the camera. I got, you see, the personality is big. It's, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's more than that. You know, it's more than that because you have to learn it again. You have to learn the craft and then understanding how you and brother, you was with me, you know, um, on set one time just to kind of see how what it was like. And it's not just that it's, it's hours of re it's repetition, right? Doing the same scene and lines over and over again for yourself and then for your scene partner. It's 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 remembering your blocking. It's it's days where you have to hurry up and wait. So it's a lot of that that entails understanding getting into this world as well. So that's what I was gonna jump into because you know you got like mm -hmm. you got folks that do their music videos, right? Yeah, wow, I do the music videos, and for them, that's acting, right? Because I'm playing a gangster. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play that. Some some rappers yeah. have their personas. You know, I'm gonna leave that where that is. Yeah, right. <laughs> and 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 some do it well. <laughs> some do some, well. Some do it well, right? Some mm -hmm. guys have their, their persona. Some guys create their pseudonyms, and they just start to believe their own hype. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you? Because if you if you leave it up to them, they'll say, "Hey, I'm 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 polished. I'm an actor because I can do this thing in music videos." Mm -hmm. You know, how do you get folks to see the the actual difference between what they're doing for music videos, which is a sort of acting because they are putting on a persona and a character. So yeah. what really to to what's really necessary for people to be, you know, successful in the transition from that to, to, to film because it is different. And I don't think people really realize that it's a very nuanced difference. That's why only a handful of your recording artists are very successful, um, right. you know, doing that. Whereas you would think that everybody who can do music videos should be successful at acting. And that just isn't mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I think one of the ways to, for that artist to get a grasp, a true grasp of it, is to get in the mix. You know, um, there's nothing. There's that saying, you know, experience is a good teacher, and there's nothing like getting the experience of actually being on a set, you know, or being around an actual actor. Um, I'll give you a, an example. Um, hmm. So I did this. Uh, I did this film with uh, street execs in Atlanta. Um, rest in peace, Bankroll Fresh. Um, they go over your track. If y'all don't, don't know about it, go 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 see that. They go over they your, go track. your it's trap. It is a classic. It's a classic. I'm so grateful uh, for everybody involved. For you know, for, you know, shout out to Two Chain. Shout out Sean Mathis. Um, you know, director um, at the time, you know, bringing me on and, and, and getting that role. The reason why I'm bringing up that example is because I remember distinctly, you know, here I am. Actually, that was, that was like one of the first like films that I was kind of getting my feet wet back into the, into the, into the game and getting, and, and making that, again, making this transition, um, getting into coming out of stage really and going into like film. And that was one of the first ones. And, uh, one of the initial ones, excuse me. And um, 
I remember we did. I did this scene with, with Bank, and we had a scene where, you know, for the most part in, this, in that in that in that in that film, Bank was playing himself. You know, hey, listen, you know, in the street hustler doing this thing. You know, those that are watching the movie know it wasn't a stress for him, right? But there was a moment, and I was playing the pastor. Everybody you knows, oh, you the pastor? You was the one that was trapping in the church. <laughs> and there was a scene that Bank and I had where. It was a, it was confrontational, not physical, but it was a, but it was a a confrontation of of energy and feeling out who's the who's the alpha, you know, in this scene, who's the alpha, who's the who's the, and this but we're talking about characters here, so in this scene we we're we're, we're literally like we're, we're confronting each other head to head and it's like a face off situation, and then one of the like the, the first take, you know. So the action, we went at it, we did we did our lines, and I'm and I am staring bank down. Cause he's he's talking real greasy to me right now. I'm staring bank down. And then we had to cut and bank walked away. He said, Oh, he said, Oh, oh shit. I said, he, he acting for real. Hold on, let me get myself together. Let me get myself together. Hold on. Because we're going in. When you think about acting, it's it's energy, it's energy transference, right? We're transferring energy and Part of that could be from who we are, but also, but if we're if we've dialed in to the character, then you you feel it. My my scene partner, who at that time was Bank, he felt it, and th- and in that moment, he realized, oh, I got to shift, because I'm over here, you know, being Bank, and even though Bank is a part of this, but no, I gotta, I, I'm I'm realizing, wait, hold on a second, because we cool, we're like we, you know, when these ain't cut, we dapping up and talking, but in that moment, we are enemies, right? So. You have to get your mind right. So to answer you, to go back, to, I, re, I say that story because in that moment, he realized, okay, I've got to, being around again, an actor, he's like, okay, I want to step my game up. I want to, I want to get myself right. And all, and, the, and one of the things that he said to me, uh, and that while we, after we finished shooting, I was like, man, I got to do it. I can't wait to do this again because I want to get, he wanted to get further into doing more acting. I mean, yeah, you could rap and do videos all day, but it was something different about that. So being in that environment, Sometimes the actors have to just kind of get out there and be, you know, do a short film, you know, do one of those indies. And, and hopefully there's an actor that's there that sees in that, that will kind of show you like, oh, you're not just retaining lines or memorizing lines, but you come in with a different nuance, right? Of energy and talent. That's make, and I don't, that should make that, that recording artist go, okay. So who, yo, yo, how you, um, who you study with, <laughs> you know, who's your right. coach, you know? Sometimes that's what it takes because you can tell somebody all day, yo, go get, you know, go get training, go to an acting class, get an acting coach. And they may be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they think they're ready, like you said. And then they jump on a set, they get the, you know, they, they may get the opportunity. And more than likely, you know how it goes. Like when you're an artist that's that big, you'll get opportunities to jump on the set right quick. But you jump on a set with, a, with an actor. That's what they do. And it'll show. The performance will show. Because there's power in how you deliver lines and how you feel comfortable in the in the in the um, the role that you're in, the character that you're playing. When you're not uncomfortable, it shows because you you're not you're not settled into it. You, you know you might be shifting. You might be you know because you know what 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 what, what the artists do when they're performing for video news videos, right? It's a whole lot of right. It's a whole lot of movement, and it's not bad. It's good for that, but that doesn't always translate well to when you're becoming an actor and that artistry and you have to at, at times um explore the power of your stillness and the power of your intentionality when delivering scenes and i think and i think back to when i saw artists like um most death on broadway doing top dog underdog and he did that joint with jeffrey wright when i think of um again it's a myriad of artists that i've watched transition and take it to the next level you know and to become understanding that they needed to get right because they, they find themselves amongst other actors going, oh no, nah, I gotta I gotta get this right. I gotta get I gotta get in my bag and I gotta do the work for this crap. How long how long do you think people should uh study for? The study never ends. You always study. It's a it's a it's the it's a constant learning process, bro. Like I can't, I just ask us to this day, did you think of the goats of our generation? They're still studying. They never, that's, it's always, I, I think you should, but, but, but let's just say in, in terms of, 
a recording artist, you know, kind of stepping into into that world for the first time, I think you have to gauge it uh, according to you know, the level of comfortability. Again, they'll be able to they'll they'll specifically be able to gauge that once they've been around. Again, like I said, the other talent, right? The other the actual actors, because depending on what they what courses they've taken or what, co- what coaching they've had, with how much training they've done, you, you could. I mean, sometimes an artist can get trained. Let's say they booked a role for upcoming TV series or a, or a film. And somebody will suggest and say, hey, listen, I want to put you in an acting class. Um, there, are, there are coaches, there are coaches that will say, listen, I'm going to train you for maybe a good three to four to five months, just depending on what the project is. Because sometimes rappers may have like a cameo, right? So they'll come in, you know, rappers or, or, or artists, thing, recording artists, it doesn't matter. They may have a, a cameo on the show. So they may come in on one episode or maybe two episodes, right? That's called a, like a get, you know, guest star, right? Um, they may come in, a couple lines, a couple scenes, and then they're in and out. But even with that, just I think depending on what's needed, was it depends on what's what's asked of that artist to play whatever character, right? For that moment in time for that role. Like they need to know, okay, if I have to go in because I'm playing somebody outside of myself, I may I may want to get in touch with this acting coach, or I may want to get in touch with this class or get this level of training because I have to delve into something that I'm familiar with, but I've never been that. So how do you portray, you know, the, you might have seen the crackhead, right? Around the way, depending on where you grew up in life and what you've seen, you might have seen it. You can imitate it. But what is it? But how can you go in and get that next level of believability if you've never been an addict, right? If you've never been an alcoholic. So it's, it's, that, it's that next level of training that it, it just depends on what, what, what's required, what's that. It's contingent upon what's needed by that recording artist at that point in time in that project. So I'm going to pivot a little bit because, okay, we said basically they should get the training. Like anybody needs to study, right? Because it's the same thing like going into the booth, you, you're, you're recording songs and the songs that don't make it is basically your practice. Right, mm-hmm. same, you know, and, and depending on who you partner with, producer wise or songwriter wise, that'll help mm-hmm. to get your craft better, right? So yeah. almost in the same kind of vein where you got to get around other actors, you got to get around coaches to get mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Let's say the actors have done that. So the first thing they've done is they've gone out there, they seek, they sought the help, they got the help of the coaches, they studied under some things, they watched some of the prominent films. Um, you mean the, to the, get, recording act, the, the recording artists have done that. You mean, right, right, trying to yeah. trying to get getting themselves where they got to go. Okay, I'm a recording artist. I've done all of my training. I think I'm ready, I'm okay. ready to get in this thing now. What's the mm-hmm. first thing that I do now that I've done my little bit of my studying, and I, I figure I want to get it get out here in the world. How do I audition? How do I get people to see who I am? How do I get to know who? project is open like what are the what are some of the the platforms the things that i have to do is, is it a headshot is it a real like how do i get the what's what yeah. are the first thing that i need to do on that well you you kind of touched on it um just now when you you know just you just said it uh it's fundamentals the basics right you have um well let me let me say, let me say this depending on again the level of recording artist that you are right again if you are mainstream you know, let's say they're independent. Let's say they're not industry. Let's say they right, right. So I was gonna say, you know, that's kind of built in. They have the connections, so it's a matter of getting a script, plugging them in, and then they just got you, you just just come ready. But let's say for the independent artist, uh, recording artist, that's like you know coming from what seems like obscurity, right? Yeah. And and yeah, but they're getting their buzz, but they're not known, but they are known enough, but but now they want to make that transition. They want to at least try to test the waters on that. Yeah, then the fundamentals is outside of the um, the training, of course, you got to get your headshots. Your, you know, the, the the thumbnails and the pictures that you've taken for your, you know, for your uh, album covers is not it. You know, that doesn't that doesn't represent what you want to do in, in, in this level of artistry or this realm of artistry. You have to have proper headshots and the headshots would need to tell, be able to show. Potentially show, you know, the essence of who you are, but also who you could become, whether you could, whether you'd like to be seen as a doctor, right? Or a lawyer, um, you know, as a detective, you know, um, as, as a fighter, um, as an action hero, like it just, again, just for like, for, uh, for, just for um, 
just just like us actors who want to have different shots that can portray different characters, the same it's the same deal. Because if you've been known or you or if you you know you're you're the you're the recording artist that's been you know R and B all your life or you've been hip hop all your life and you know and that's what you're known for that's you that's all you've known. But if you say man, but I want to get I want man, you know what I would love to play? I'd love to play a, a like a like an even scientist type dude. I think they don't. That so you may want to take pictures and sometimes they'll um kind of like character character photos, but still a, a, a decent headshot, a good headshot. You can portray that if you're wearing the right clothes. And not, and not necessarily wardrobe, but you know, there's headshots for you wearing a suit, you know, suit and tie, jacket. Just depends. But but it, it's clean headshots because that's what you'll need. Um you might not have a reel, you know, uh at this point, because again, if you're just getting into it, you would don't worry about the reel just yet. Um, you wouldn't have those things. But what you can do, because if you're a recording artist and just like how you'll take the money and you will invest in, you know, recording time, right? Recording studios or, you know, just getting the tracks that you need. Just like, uh, just say, same way for an actor. Um, I would, I would suggest use your, you know, use your resources. You don't, you didn't, you haven't jumped on a show yet. You haven't jumped on a, on a, on a film yet. Create one, get with your fellow artists and, and create it. You, you see yourself playing something other than a thug. I right, get with a writer. Get with writers that it's a, I, I promise you it's almost the same formula. I just think that sometimes depending on the type of artist that you are, you may have more access. Um, but get with other creatives and create the, and create the character that you want. And you can absolutely put create your own reel. Use that in conjunction with your headshot, and you can sell it. Now the other part is you may you may say, well, how do I sell it? Well, of course, having accessibility to it um, is important. So now you may want to use a platform like what we call Access Access. And that's still a viable platform, even as even as an independent recording artist, I, it doesn't hurt to have your, you know, because that's something that you wouldn't typically put your information on. But if you go on and create your profile for that, put up your headshot, put up whatever short deal that you've made in terms of like, hey, I just did a, I just shot. You don't have to shoot a movie. You don't have to make it a film. Just something showing, just shoot a scene, something sh showing you other than R&B artist, other than spoken word, other than the rapper, right? Um, Create it and put and, and create a reel of that and put that out there and put that up on your access access. Um, and that would yeah, be where and that would be where you would be able to see the work, see the things that are being offered. Would that be the place where you would find that? That's one of the places that you would find that. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I, that, yeah, that's one of the. I, I think that's one of the main ones truly within this industry because it covers the gamut of you know every coast from you know West Coast, East Coast. It it, it it covers uh, those bases because a lot of, um, again, outside of you, your management or, or, or agent or team having direct contact with certain people, they'll, they're going to, you know, act as access or cast a talent, uh, casting network. You know, they're going to those platforms because that's where you'll build up your profile as an actor, right? To say, okay, I see her in this. I see him doing this. That's where you would typically put those, uh, you know, put those, um, those, those bodies of work. Um, and then, of course, and just mentioning that, someone say, "Well, yeah, I need an agent. I need a manager." I was good. I was just getting ready to get there. Like, so when does a person get to the point where they would either need a manager, get an agent? Do they need legal counsel? Do they need to have an attorney on top? So, you know, then we'll go further and say, "Hey, at what point do you get a publicist?" Um, you know. I, I, yeah, it, it, it go. Here's the thing, though. It, it goes in in steps and in tears. Now, as a recording artist, right? We, you, you know, you and I both know. Part of that is going to be you're going to have that in your arsenal anyway. Meaning, you're going to have a lawyer on tap, and the same lawyer on tap. You're going to have um, an an, an a, a manager, so to speak, right? In that realm, in terms of the creative realm, and oftentimes, depending on you know who your manager is or who your reps are, they may have that. That that link, because again, you know, this, this business is all about who you know. They may have that link to someone so that works in a in a in an acting talent agency, you know, or that knows a film producer, or, or or that knows a director. So a lot of that is connection. But I will say, just like the journey of, you know, the specific actor and uh, upcoming actors, you have to gauge it. Um, I say before you worry about publicists and oftentimes before you worry about manager, agent, build up your, your work first. 
because a lot of times, and again, especially coming from independent artists, again, you're not as known as the mainstream. They don't know who you are. You don't have a reel. You, you don't have nothing because they want to know, because in order for a manager to manage, in order for an agent to, to, to rep you, they want to be able to, they're going to look at, well, so what have you done? You know, they're going to have to look at what have you done, right? They can look at raw talent and say, okay, you got some talent. And they may, they may, may, they may or may not take you, you know, depending on who they are and what, what, you know, what branch it is, what agent is, how big the agency is. But it may, it's not always like, okay, I'm, I'm in, I, I, I took a class. I was in class for a couple of months. Let me get my agent. Let me get my manager, uh, my, my acting agent and manager on deck. And, and that not, that might not necessarily be the case. It's the same thing. With, it's the same thing with music. You got to do and, something before you got to do something before you get the interest of a manager. You know right. that if you're not earning anything, it's hard for you to get management. Exactly. That's exactly. The that's the reality of it. You, that's the reality of it. Like you have to. You have to. Like one of the things um, that I have is like you know, um, you know, don't wait, create, right? And I, I think that carries throughout. Like just you, you, oftentimes with. We're thinking, well, I'm going to even even for us, like we say, if we're going to audition for these particular roles, we're going to audition for these particular type uh, movies or films. And you, you may or may not get that audition. But in the meantime, what can you do to control that? Um, so I say, listen, let me get with my, you know, as, as Issa Rae would say, right, work across. So let me find the, you know, if you're not a writer, let me find a writer. If, you, if, you don't, if you're not a director, let me find a director. Let me find a DP. DP is director of photography. Let me find somebody who's not, not a videographer. Videographer, and not, I'm not going to say not a videographer because some videographers have that background and have that talent. It just depends because a videographer specifically shooting for videos, you know, it's different. And, you know, people, of course, like my man Benny, who have made that transition, they, they can tell you themselves like they had to rewire their brain a bit and shooting a music video to shooting a show, right? Or even a film, like I did on All Eyes on, All Eyes on Me, right? And of course, he did not um, uh, Next Day Air. So, it's again levels of different levels of talent, right? Going from one spectrum to the next. Um, but you, you, you can create um, your, you can create your opportunity. I, I think, as an, especially as a recording artist, right, bro? I think you know. I've, I remember doing music videos, um, but incorporating the storytelling. In it. Yeah. So even in telling that story, and if you want to go go deeper into, it, well, then okay. And and artists have done this. I think you know we've seen many artists do this. We'll make it a make it. You can make that like a short film. Right. You can make. You know what I'm saying? That's a, another way for you to create your brand, and that's something that you, depending on how you shoot it and and how you chop it up, that's something that you can repurpose not only across your platforms for everybody to see, but specifically casting directors, directors, producers, right? You can so repurpose it there, and so that's a, so that's a jewel. I'm sorry to, to cut you, but that's a no, jewel. no, no. Go ahead, but that's that's the jewel. So the jewel is basically for all you folks out there that's listening, that's recording artists, etc. It's for you to take the content that you create for your music to create mm -hmm. it as close as you possibly can to a quote unquote mm -hmm. film project, which a lot of artists are doing. Right, some right. artists are very smart about doing that, and then they're yes. able to repurpose that content that they did for their music videos. Mm -hmm. Some way or fashion, maybe to use it for their actors' real, real, yes, yeah, absolutely. Out of the mouth I mean, of Sean uh, Anthony Baker. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Let me get the. Let me get the. Let me get the. Let me get the claps on that. Hold on. Let me get the claps on that. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a jewel. Like if people don't understand, like because you know that's the question. It's like, how do I get in? How do I get in? We're telling you how to get in. Go get the headshots. Go do the code, go do the go go study. Mm -hmm. Take the headshots in the fashion that will basically uh, translate to what you want to be portrayed as as an actor, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you're kind of niching down a little bit, right? You say, yep. "Hey, this is a, this is what I want to kind of the I want to have this kind of look, and this is what I'm going to be going for as far as auditions is concerned." And I guess mm -hmm. that's the reason why you sometimes you change your looks. Because mm -hmm. you you know that you're you're when you're I, I didn't understand that at one point I was like why is he taking so many damn headshots but um, <laughs> but, minute, now, <laughs> but I get it now because it's like okay you know it's like you said it's like we have to um, portray we have to be futuristic in the way that we're thinking and say okay we got to yeah. portray 
what not only what I want to play currently, but what I want to play in the future. Right. You know, and 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 making mm-hmm. sure that I have that that look that will translate into that. And then also, yep. I guess the same thing would be for the reels. Also, is kind of creating reels that um, that highlight certain uh, capabilities as far as your acting range, whether it be yep. action, whether it be uh, comedy, or mm-hmm. you know, to, to have those things in the reel to show um, the kind of work that you can, are capable of delivering. Right, I guess. right, right. It, it, it again, like it. When you think about it, especially as a recording artist, it kind of writes itself, right? You, you, you've already, you've got, you may or may not have the song or songs that is telling a particular story. Again, it goes back to what I said before, you know, at the end of the day, we're all storytellers. It's right. just a matter of how we want to tell the story. And so as a recording artist, I think the, the, the caveat to that is here you are, you can actually combine music, which we do in TV and film anyway, right? You think of scores and, you know, we've worked on scores and movies. So you understand that, that, that music inspires, you know, momentum and, or inspires a moment, um, or, or it can definitely heighten the level of a scene. So as a recording artist, you, you got the music part is already there, but how can I, how can I show you that I, that, that is a character that's outside of what you normally see on my, you know, day to day, you know, performing on stage, performing in stadiums or performing, you know, in my music videos. But how can I let you know that I can also be this person? And you have that. It's, it, it's literally right there in the palm of your hands. Just create it differently. Do some with music and do some without. Let them, you know, do in a straight scene, a conversation like how you're not talking right now. What does that mean? What's the conversation in a room with, you know, with, with you know, with an antagonist, you know? Or what's a heartfelt scene? Or what's, you know, just think, it's, you've got to, as creative, as creative as recording artists as we get, you know, in studios, in the booth, or just writing, we can be just as creative in that realm. And I think that's where we can win. That's where you can, that, that can help your transition, along with the, the fundamental um, steps that you need to take. But again, remember, it's all creative. So it goes back to, okay, I may not have the acting reel that so-and-so has, but I can create this. I can, I can show them this is what I can do. Right, but you know, this day and age is all about what you can show, right? You got to show them, and then that's what these—that's what hopefully we use these platforms for to show. It's not showboating, it's not boasting, but I need to show you because you may not know, right? You may not know that I know how to box, or that I know martial arts, or that I know, you know, uh, you know, have weapons training. You may not know, but, but, but when, what we do is we create uh, the visuals, right? We create the, the visuals. And we and we and then we repurpose it and we put it out to the world because we never know. Again, everybody's watching, and we never know who's watching. We never know who's going. You know what? I I know I knew that she could, I knew that she could sing, but I didn't know that she knew uh she could do stunts. Yeah, you know, like I, it's like yeah. but they don't, if you don't put it out, they don't know. Yeah, like this is the new this is the next Black Panther. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know this, it, listen, if somebody they ain't looking, they gotta find it right here, right? They, you gotta so, find so, it, right? So so look, check it out. Um. Talk to the folks about the process of auditioning. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The process of auditioning and then what's your process for auditioning? Because that's also an integral part of it after you've already gone through the the setup like we talked about in terms of the studying, the headshots, the um the purposing of a reel. Now we're on actors access. Now we're now we we get somebody says, "Hey, there's an audition for ABC." Mm-hmm. What's the process of auditioning, at least in your mind? Um, in terms of a recording artist now having to audition, right? Um, well, just, well let me first say this: the audition process has. Went through a went through a transition over the years, um, especially last couple of years with, with with pandemic and COVID hitting. A lot of the times, um, traditionally, we would have what's called an in person audition, right? So you you get an audition, um, you would of course going back to getting the training, having your acting coach. That means that you have done scene prep, you've been over your lines, and now you do an in person, um, and you and 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 you have to prepare yourself to be in the room. Uh, to do those auditions amongst maybe it could be three to four, it could be two people, it could be three, four, five, just depends. Not that not it wouldn't be 
you know, a studio full of people, but or, or an office room full of people, but it would be enough, typically director, producers, you know, I'm involved in a casting director. Nowadays, we have what's called self-tape, um, which I personally love just as much as being in a room because energetically being in a room is, is something different. But I feel that what the self-tape, um, you know, um, world that we're in right now, what it allows, I believe, allows actors to do as artists is to be able to take your time and create the world. Take your time to create your scene um, and, 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 and not to go too overboard, but to just kind of get more in depth and get more um, layered with how you want to, get more layered with how you want to portray this character. So a recording artist will have to keep in mind, again, if they've gotten the proper training, the proper uh, classes of coaching, they've also prepped them for, or they've also done audition training because self-tape training is, is needed because you have to know, you know, what that is in terms of, and, and, and just explain self-tape, meaning you can you either get, a, you, you can go to a service, services will provide this um, in terms of have a camera set up, video camera set up and you know, have you in a room, you have a blank wall behind you, um, three point lighting, meaning your lighting is good, small angles, and they can, you're well lit, they can see you, audio is good, and the services that provide that. We also live in a world where we can do it ourselves, and I do it all the time. Um, we have we have our phones now that are pretty much like mini studios, right? <laughs> mini, that's a mini, mini studio, mini office, iPhones, uh, Galaxy, phone, Galaxy phones, what have you. They have the, the the capabilities now to you can record it yourself. You get a mini tripod, or, or you get you know get a stand. You get your ring light, and you get your or you get your lighting. You know, invest in some lighting. Um, make sure that you have a blank a blank wall behind you, typically black or gray. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, well black, gray, or blue, and, um, you know, and, and you can do it, you do what's called your self-tape. And so often, if you get that audition, or they say, hey, we have an audition for you, most times they don't want you to do a self-tape. And there's, again, that's just training in that, and understanding when you have that um, opportunity to self-tape is understanding where your, you know, where your, where, where your line of focus will be when, when, you know, when doing your audition. You know, right now, you're not talking, you know, face-to-face, -face, so, we're in um in the audition world. We're breaking the fourth wall. We don't do that. But if I'm if but if you're the camera, right, and I'm auditioning, typically I would place the person who's in the scene with me. Who I'm talking to, off the, off the camera left or camera right, right. So it looks so the camera captures captures me having a conversation in the moment because this is what it would look like, you know, when you're filming on the day. That's what right. the casting directors need to see. So just that little nugget. Those are things like that. Is what when it comes to auditioning is that's the stuff that. I think should be encompassed in when you're dealing with the acting coach or when you're taking your lessons because they will they should train you on that as well. Because once they've gone over techniques, right, once you've done character breakdown and scene breakdown, then it's like, oh, yeah, let's prep you for when you have auditions. And, uh, and, the, and, and the processes are different. You know, I typically, when it comes to preparing for an audition, I like to get my, if it's not a full script, but if I get my, what they was called sides, and sides can, um, depending on what, Casting directors will, uh, for the most part, will send um, an actor um, um, sides and sides are a portion of the script, but they'll pick out a scene that they feel will tell the best, um, the best representation for that particular character that you're auditioning for. So that, those sides can vary from being th two pages to three pages to seven to 12 pages. And it just depends on what, you know, how involved that character is. Are they a main character? Are they the principal? Are they support? Are they guest starring, co-stars? So all of those, there's different levels to it. But I like to typically, before I just jump in and reading who my line is, and I'm saying, okay, I'm Derek. Before I just read Derek, let me read the whole thing. If you have the opportunity to read the script, I always suggest read the script. I read it as a story first. I want to know what's happening in the scene. You know, so I may break it down and say, let me find out what's happening in this world. Don't just jump to, oh, my part is here. Cool. I'm going to just, cool, just you know, start studying my lines. No. Understand what I think it's a price to understanding what the story is about, because the better that you understand what the story is about, the better you can understand how to live through this character that you're auditioning for and that you're trying to portray. And um, and another part of the process is just repetition and just and just understanding, um, you know, where you are in the scene. Um, again, goes back to character breakdown and scene and, and um, script analysis. If you're able to get a full script, it's understanding the whole gamut of the story so that you know where your character fits in that world. Yeah, so auditioning process is a whole other, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's another thing. So 
I gotta ask the other question now, right? The other question is this now. Okay. You've done all of that. Boom, 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 boom. Your audition. Mm-hmm. Hey man, we like you. Jug, we like you, Jug. We want you okay. in this production, Jug. What should I expect? Like, what should I expect going in? Um, um, I don't want to go too too deep into I know folks may need to see if they can get involved with SAG and stuff like that, but when does that come into play as far as you know? Uh, the Screen Actors Guild and um, uh, the unions, like when does that stuff come into play for folks? Um, should they be looking <laughs> to do that first? Um, you know, it's I, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm it, asking these loaded questions, I, but you know, I know. I, yeah, I, yeah, you, you said it. it's loaded because it's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not like hey, just do this and you'll get this and do that, and it's 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 not as. Uh, Cut as dry as I was, as Yeah, as no, I no, 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 because you ask you ask a questionable question is that it's kind of like laid and there's multiple steps involved. If I go backwards, becoming SAG union, it, it's funny because some um, artists may already be SAG just because of the performances that they've done. So they, they may already become part of the, uh, of, of the um, performance guild, but the SAG is a screen actors guild. So what, what the union will require is that you've done a certain body of work, right? Um, or that you've done a certain body of work or have a certain amount of credits. Um, but you also can, and, and that also, and that's in conjunction with paying, for paying uh, the dues for being in the, in the union. So you get to that level once they've been able to gauge and see what you've done within the, you know, the world of acting. And sometimes that that will vary from, uh, um, and forgive me if I'm saying this because it's been a minute. <laughs> but um, you know, a lot of people start out doing background work, um, start out doing. Um, Stand in work, and and that doesn't necessarily translate to getting in the guild, but they'll, but you can, you, you, it's getting the experience and being on set and having hours and having time, um, but also getting with if you can you, if you're working on independent projects, independent projects now nowadays have the ability to let their project become uh, become SAG or or, or or they have different levels. They have um, you know what's called a, um, a low budget, right? So they may have the low budget films, right? That could still be SAG, but it may not be the, the big budget, um, uh, uh, you know, f- films or, or or series that they may have created, but it's still covered under the union. And that was one of the ways to kind of, you know, start getting into that world. Even if, even if a, cre- even if a recording artist were to work on a, on a, let's say a SAG film, SAG project, they may not be part of the guild. They'll still get, they would still, you know, depending on what they booked and what's going on, they may still get paid to work in that project, but that would that but they may not become SAG right away, but it makes them what's called SAG eligible. SAG eligible is not SAG. It's not the union, just to be clear, because I've had to learn that coming in, into the world too. However, um, that puts you on the path. Again, should you want to pursue acting as a full-time gig, that puts you on the path to becoming that because then now you're saying, okay, listen, I've worked on, I forget how many um SAG films or SAG uh shows, what have you that you have to be on. But and you can look that up and research it because SAG, um, just go to you know, uh, SAG at SAG.com. I believe that's what it is. Um, but it's it's out there, you can you can Google it and find it, and it'll let you know, um, you know, what's what you know, what the criteria is. Um, but aim for that right away. The other part of what you guys said is a loaded question. So, going from union stuff is like you'll get to that. Focus on getting your, your experience and your weight up first, right? Because you don't just jump into SAG. Um, that's a, that you you get there once you again you kind of put the work in. Um, and and forgive me, going back to the other for the first part, the first part of what you asked was, um, because you said you got the you got you got the audition. Okay, and you said they like you. Okay, I want to address that. I want to oh, make sure this oh, is clear. That's, oh, that's yeah. the uh, that's the uh, oh that's the difference between the the, the pin and the. The wow. actual job. Yeah, brother. Okay, yeah. so, so let's, let's, so let's be, explain let's be that. Because you said, because you, what you said was, now that, hey, Jug, they like, they like you, Jug, we want you. So understand that this also comes in tears, right? Um, again, as a, if you're a mace, I got to have to say it again to be very clear. If you're a recording artist that's out there and you've, you know, you've got the notoriety, a lot of times you're getting offers because they, because they also want your presence because they know that that builds up followers. And so that's a whole deal, right? That's the, that's the, that's the give and take of that world. Again, as a recording artist, and you've done all of those other steps, you may, after you've auditioned, right? It can go a lot of different ways, depending on where you're submitting your project to, what the project is, who is involved. They may say, Jug, we like you. So that like you could be, okay, we want to pin you. 
So that pin means, okay, I, I may, um, they want to ask you, hey, we want to pin you for this project. It shoots from, uh, you know, November 5th, you know, to December 1st. Are you available? So we'll pin you. You'll get what's called an avail check. So you might get what's called an avail check to see if you're available. That means there's interest. And then they may want to pin you. And the pin you means, you know what, not only are we interested, we really like you. You know, but, but, <laughs> here's the kicker. You're not bugs. You're not bugs. That does not mean that they may like you. They can, they can absolutely, genuinely, you know, sincerely love what you did on your self-tape or even in-person audition. However, understand the different uh, levels of people that are, that are involved. You have directors, producers, writers that want to take a look at who you're suggesting. And so now they're like, oh, we like him or her, but we also have so-and-so who could be a credited actor, right? A legit actor from, you know, from whatever series or show. They may have a little notoriety, but they have more acting chops. We really like what you did, John. But let's see. So now we got, so now you're pinned, but now they got to take what you did, compare it to one, two, three, four, five, maybe 10 other possibilities for this role. And they have to make a decision. When they make the decision, should it be you, then you're booked. Then they'll say, hey, listen, we'd like to, then you, you get what's called the offer. We'd like to offer you, Jug, the role of, you know, Mr. Jug, Mr. Jug and not retirement, right? <laughs> you know, um, and then, so at this point, now when that happens, you absolutely want to make sure that once you get that offer, you have your reps get involved. And your reps meaning at that point in time, and again, by this time, I think most recording artists have at least an attorney. You want to have an attorney look over that work, make sure that the paperwork is what it needs to be, um, make sure what you're getting paid is what it needs to be. Again, if you're not SAG already, you may be getting paid scale or, you know, again, depending on how, who can negotiate your deal. It all, it, it all varies. There's no, again, no cut and dry to it, but know that once you get the offer, and they want to book you, you're booked. Now, let me say this. Damn. Damn I'm sorry. All, all, all they've been, hey. they been doing is pinning me, man. They won't book me, man. I'll yeah, they do. Hey, they like you. But no, but, cannot, but I will say this. I've been pinned many a time. And I've been pinned and unpinned. And they and understand that they may, they may they tell you when they like you, but they don't tell you when they don't like you. Right. You're not gonna you're not gonna get a notification of an email or a phone call saying, Hey, we really, really like you, we're gonna go another way. You may get that phone call when you're like maybe higher up in the game, whether you're a recording artist or an actor. You may get that, hey, we gotta go another direction because so and so you may get that, man. But as a you're just on an everyday level of actor or even a recording artist transitioning to actor, you're not gonna get that, hey, we really like your audition. We wish that you could have done this much more, but or we would decided to go this far. You're not gonna get that. If you get if you get a pin or a, or a check avail or you just booked it, then just know that you did your job. Because even with a pin or a check avail, just un understand that you've gotten the attention of the casting directors, possibly the possibly writers, producers. You know, even when they got to take it up to you know up, run it up the chain. Understand that you've got the retention, so it's still a win. But just to be clear, because as you said earlier, when they like you, they really like you. Yeah, but do they like me? Like me? Or like they want me, they're on books, or they like me and they're considering me because there's maybe five other people. So just keeping that in mind too. Again, it goes, in, it, it goes in tears, you know. Um, so I got two questions before we get out of here, right? So two okay, questions. Okay. It's like one, um, what's the best way for folks to deal with the rejection? Ooh. And then the last would be music. Or acting, what's your what's your preference, and why? So first, let's Ooh. go to rejection, and then we'll okay, get to the so okay, so what's the best way to deal with rejection, or what's you didn't get the role, you you, you wanted to be an avatar. <laughs> you didn't get to be in the biggest grossing film of all time. You just you auditioned, you know, James Cameron liked you, he wanted to paint you blue. You all for it and then you ain't, you ain't quite get in. You know, but you were close. You were close. Mm -hmm. You know. Even, you know, let's say you even went through the pin process. You went to that, they like you, paint yeah. you, check your avail. 
I've been there. And Listen, I've got. And then, and, then, <laughs> and then, you know, you, you you can literally have the producers calling you to be in the film. Like, okay, and you you just can't get it. You know, you don't have the availability, or you have other obligations. Right. Or they, with... or they go or, or they go another route. Right. How um, how can how can folks be prepared for the, mentally for that rejection? Because I mean, it happens in music. Sometimes we do stuff yeah. and it doesn't resonate. You you want this guy on the album, you can't get it. You might mm-hmm. you may have wanted to you know book this show, you can't get it. You know, you right. can't get this performance this venue. There's mm-hmm. always things that let people down, but yeah, with acting it seems a little bit more personal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you don't like me the way you say. You don't me. like me, right? Like, you don't, you know, like, me. You don't like, like me, like you know. Like, and, and 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 it's it's you're right though. That's that's a good way to put it. It it, it feels so personal. And the reason why it does is because again, when we talked about the the time and energy that you put into preparing for the audition, right, or preparing to give your your best version of performance of this role. Then you get to the point where it's like, well, one, you either don't hear anything back. That's also rejection. And then the next level of rejection is we like you, but we didn't like you that much. And it might not even be that. We liked you that much, but we just had to go a different way. And so it's understanding first that I think the first part of dinner rejection is to understand that rejection exists. That we have to you have to accept that as part of this business and, and the same business as a whole, but it's especially in this business. This is the most, I think one of the most unforgiving careers you can have where rejection is a staple. It's par for the course. So I think the first step is just keeping that in mind that guess what? Nothing is guaranteed. And that's in life, right? But, especially in this world that it's not guaranteed and rejection is rejection is inevitable and is possible. Um, but I think the other part to that is understanding that what's for you is for you and what's for you will never pass you. So I've had to, me personally, I've had to adapt that mentality and, and it's, it's come to, uh, sometimes we get to see the why, right? Oh, I didn't get this because, Oh, you may see, oh, they booked, oh, they booked him because, oh, it's a name. Oh, they booked him, oh, but they booked her because, um, oh, they want a, they want a different, they want a different look. I've, I've not gotten gigs because it, it said open ethnicity, you know, or it started out they wanted a black male. Next thing you know, they, they've got an Asian male up there, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, or they, or they, or they change the gender. You know what? We want to, we want to, you know, we, we'd rather have a woman play this role. Nothing, nothing I could do about that. Right. Just nothing you can do about it. it you, you, all you can do, especially in this realm, is, is do your best. Give your best effort, put your best foot forward, and just hope that the right people see it and that it translates well um, enough to show the powers that be that you've got what it takes, that you've left an impression, that you've got the chops. You know? And if maybe not for this one, but for the next one, it would consider you. And that, is, and that has literally happened because I may not have been right for you know, this job, but a director or a writer or a producer saw you and was like, yeah, I know she wasn't good for this or he wasn't, I mean, she wasn't meant for this role, but I see them in something else. I'm working on this other project. Hey, and you get that email or that phone call or somebody contacts you and it absolutely happens. So leave your mind open for that. Rejection is part of this business, but understand that what's for you will never pass you. Um, and and the last the last thing on that is what I was told by a mentor of mine is whatever it is, whatever it is, it's it's either this or the divine equivalent. Whatever you whatever you're going for, it's it's this, what you're hoping for, what you're looking for, what you're aiming for, it's gonna be this or the divine equivalent. And sometimes we don't know what that is until it's time to experience it and we and we get to see and we go, oh, okay. I might not have, I might not have gotten that role. And it still would have been a win, but this role, this role is what I needed to get me to the next level or take me to the next level. So, you know, in terms of rejection, I think that's just one of the ways to look at it. Um, so the final one was? So the final one was? Music. Music uh, or acting. 
know you love. I, I hate. Know, I, I, know you I, I hate love I, some music, boy. I, I, I know hate that. that you, I hate that you asked me this question. I, I really listen because I know I, I know our roots, and I yeah. know and I know what we put into that. I know, like you know, we put in a whole lot. You know, uh, you know, our, lot of work. our story is our story, and and our successes are our successes. You know, there's not many people that we can. You know we can, that we can have these type of conversations with us. Say, hey, this is what we did collectively into this thing. Coming yeah, from zero, yeah. No, zero, nothing, like, goose egg. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like we no come equipment, from the no, no equipment, listen. no cars, no watches, what, no cribs. Bro, what what Jada Kid said? I come from the bottom where the floor is. Like we we came from the bottom where the floor is. Yeah, right? Like so, you know. Um, again, uh, part of my back story, my history is that music and, 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 and acting has been kind of hand in hand, especially when you've dealt with like musical theater, right? So they've kind of been, I've been able to walk hand in hand with those things, uh, uh, you know, luckily I've just been blessed to do that. Music has filled my, music has always filled my life in a way where, I can't do without it. Like I listen to music every day, and 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 I grew up with that. So it 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 it's a part of it's a part of me that I can never let go, and I have a deep, profound respect and love for. That being said, there is something with acting that challenges me more. Got it. I have to. When I was doing music and it was doing, you know, writing we were in the studio, it, it, that that trained me in a way, right? You know, whether we were producing and in the studio with Nas in the studio, you know what I'm saying, with Rain and Wu Tang, we were working. I mean, that challenged us because we had to like, we had to find ways to creatively bring our A game and you know, and and and, and musically, uh, be you know, just musically be prepared to give our best self so that we can be on level, you know, with these guys who we look at as our, you know, our, our idols, right? Legends in the game. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same with acting, but with acting, it's more of a push for, your, for yourself. And you can do that. You can say that with music too, but for me, the acting challenge me, challenges me in a way where I have to, I have to delve into places that may be uncomfortable. I have to delve into places in my emotional bag, right? Mental bag. That may be uncomfortable for me to unearth, but my but by me doing so, it's the sacrifice that I make as an artist to give you my truth and telling a story that I may or may not have any connection to. And in all of that, making it believable at the end of the day. And so acting brings a different nuance and challenge to me as a creative human being to challenge me even in what I think is my best self. Um, what's the, where's the next level that I can take my creativity storytelling to? Um, how can I make you believe that? Um, how can I show you that I can go from playing, you know, a pastor to a doting husband, to a troubled father, you know, to a, to an, uh, uh, to an a, a addiction riddled uncle or brother, especially if, you know, and it's different if you have some connection to it, but if I've never had any connection to that, even if I had just watched it and experienced it, but if I haven't personally experienced that, how much did I have to study and prepare and go in and be relatable and be non-judgmental to a character that I have never played before? I think that's a different level of a challenge, a different level for me. So that's why acting kind of will, that's that, in that way, that's why acting would, 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 would top the music. But not the money, though. <laughs> I mean, listen, money no, comes, money goes. You, go, go, you ain't gotta go there. You ain't gotta go there. I'm just, money comes, money go, man. <laughs> yeah. Money come, money go, right? Um, yeah, man. I, I appreciate you, man. Like, you know, I, mm. I, I, I just, I said, let me call. I said, let me call you. I said, I said, um, I said, Mikey, not feeling good. So I said, yeah, you know, let, let me, um. Let me let me let me get the let me give the people something a little different, you know, in terms of music business, yeah. this music industry, and it's so funny because you know, as I kind of, you know, as a, you know, we kind of as you're going through it, and I'm 
going through it with you and I'm asking questions mm-hmm. and I'm learning this industry. Yeah. Right. Because the same way yeah. we had to learn the music industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm on the horn with you trying to learn that that film industry and that TV industry. Right. Getting mm-hmm. used to the jargon and trying to really and then the similarities. There are so many similarities which kind of makes it a, a easier transition because they're kind of intertwined in some sort of ways. Yeah. Um, but um it's just it's just it's just a thing that I, I always tell people. I'm like, listen, um, being able to be successful in these two arenas, um, not easy, bro. And you know, I mm-hmm. always I always applaud you on that. Always hats off to that mm-hmm. because I, I I always know, like, listen, this is not, you know, people don't understand what they got to sacrifice to make it in this game, and the sacrifices are real. You know what I mean? And I'm not like, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about. Excuse me, not just burning sage and stuff. I'm talking about you guys. This, this, <laughs> this. There are sacrifices in terms of your social life. There's sacrifices in terms of the things that you have to miss. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because you just can't be present for everything and everybody when you're on right. that journey. And it, it is what right. it is. So right. I always want to try to give people that dynamic and say, listen, like if this is the things that you want to do, just be clear that it's going to take a whole bunch of work. It's going to take a whole bunch of sacrifices. People may not even understand and see your vision to it because there there are people that doubt, don't see your vision, don't even know, you know, like at times people don't know what's when it's, you know, like I used to say like, damn, when's our next, when's that next placement going to come? Or when's that next job going to (laughs) be? You don't know, you know what I'm saying? You just got to keep grinding and then, and then, you know, you get your blessings and it's just like, not everybody's prepared for that. Not everybody's prepared to weather those type of storms. So that's real. I, that's I, real. I, I appreciate you and and just giving people a little insight, a little peek behind the veil. So mm-hmm. for all those folks that keep asking me, hey, how do I get into acting? How do uh, 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 watch the episode? Right? <laughs> watch the episode. Watch the episode. <laughs> watch the episode. Listen, follow, take follow, it in. <laughs> follow follow my homie at, at uh, you know. On Twitter and on um, on Instagram and on Facebook, you know Sean Anthony Baker mm-hmm. at uh, Sean Baker Online. That's most of the time. That's the um, that's the at right. Um, yeah. Well, now now it's the now it's uh, now it's Sean Anthony, Sean Anthony Baker. Yeah. Sean Anthony Baker. Like mm-hmm. you, you'll find him. You know he's the only. Yeah, black you'll one, find me. Right. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man, and I thank you as always for, like you said, we have stories that we haven't even told yet. You know what I mean? No, no, and we, and, and we a lot of the telephone stories. Oh yeah, gonna... yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll wait. But it's funny because a lot of people, and I don't talk about it as much. You know, they may see me on platforms big enough, architect pieces, the family, and all of that. Um, but they don't know. A lot of people don't know that I have a. Um, I, I was a music artist, you know, first, you know, and that. Yeah, that I was signed and had deals and pub deals, and we did, you know, scored movies, and they don't, they don't know, you know, and I don't tell, tell it like that because I feel like it'll, it'll be time for that. But I appreciate the fact that my tribe, my people, always say, "Listen, hey, bro, beat your chest." You know what I'm saying? Let you know because there's times we have a little bit too much humble pie, and we get too much humble pie until we starve, right? <laughs> so that humble you pie, know, you can choke, boy. Don't eat too much choke, humble boy. pie, you choke on that humble yeah, pie. Yeah. It's real, you and you've always told me that. So you know, we've got to let people know. Like, listen, this this is who this is who we are. This is who I am, and what I come from, and what we've done, and these are the experiences that we're glad to share. You know, that's what's, so that's what's up? Yes, yeah, so I appreciate you, brother. Yo, love. It's like this. Love, um, it's Arch- Architect Beats, uh, Music Business Podcast. Make sure y'all check us out. If you haven't already subscribed, if you haven't already followed, if you haven't already. You know, make sure you mm-hmm. do that. And if you love what we're doing, share that joint, man. Share it. But until next yeah. time, peace. Peace.